Uh, Throckmorton Fine Art was uh, established in 1980 in New York and we have three specialties. We do photography, uh, ancient art from the Americas and ancient art from China. Since we're very specialized and I think when you're very specialized your gallery will stand out more because you have a specialization. Uh, a lot of the galleries in New York do general and they do lots of contemporary and they do different things, but by specializing in pre-Columbian, it gives us sort of a niche and it, we also, in the niche of photography, we handle Latin American photography because what I noticed is that in America there were not many galleries that ever had work of artists from Latin America and South America, so in the 80s we began to shift going into more of the artist from the Americas and um, and recently we've added a couple of Chinese artists for our photography department. Well, the question of uh, where did the clients come from that collect in the fields of pre-Columbian and archaic China is that most of the clients are Americans uh, we do have a few clients coming from South America, from Venezuela. There are a lot of people that specialize within the field of pre-Columbia. They will only collect things from Mexico, or they will only collect Maya things, or they will only collect Olmec things. And so you do have specialization of collectors. And there are people that have directions, but there are overall a lot of generalists who like to have things from Mesoamerica as well as South America and um, that composes most of the market. We're hoping that as China becomes more sophisticated that the Chinese, they're also interested in Mesoamerica, that they will come to collect and also uh, the jade that I specialize in and the early objects that I specialize in from China or archaic jades from the Hongshong period through uh, up to Qing, so it covers the whole gamut. Um, the great thing is that I, for the last 10 years, have been collecting very heavily in that area and working with um, Gu Fang, who's the leading archaeologist in China, for authentication, and he also publishes for Science Press and I've been very lucky to have known him and to have worked with him for vetting things. It's very important. We've lost a lot of the middle range of clients that come in and buy things that are under um, $5,000. That market has changed. Uh, we have a few collectors who buy things in the six-figure range, but um, there are lots of wonderful objects that come on the market and hopefully we'll find buyers, but I do think that the market has reduced by at least 30%. Um, I see it growing and recently we've seen a, a tremendous upturn in, in business and uh, the early part of the crisis, it, it was a little quiet, but uh, we've had the return of the major clients who buy major objects and we've had some of the middle ground and smaller objects selling as well. Unfortunately this year um, we've um, been limited in America to now import art from China that is pre-Tang, so that will have a tremendous impact on the market for ancient jades and ancient Buddhist sculpture because we also handle uh, a very large selection of early Buddhist sculpture. But I do see that the market is still strong, that it still exists, and uh, people are very much, uh, I think man has always been intrigued and always wanted quality and beautiful things. And I think that will never go out of fashion, and I think that um, there'll be, there'll always be an art market and it will survive. It will be a little bit of belt tightening, but I think, uh, as what I've seen recently, that there has been a flight to quality. This year will be better than last year. So I think 
We, I don't know what the percentage are, is, but I know we're 10% up over last year already, and we're only into half the year. So I think it's going to be very positive.